in the lane, 15, 10, touchdown, Chargers! What's up, guys? Welcome into an emergency podcast edition of Chargers Weekly. Money and I don't usually tape in the evenings. It's Wednesday evening, and Jim Harbaugh has just been named head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. We are presented by Microsoft Surface. And, buddy, should I just say it off the top? Who has it better yeah. than Chargers fans right now? Nobody. <laughs> uh, we've been waiting, Chris. We've been waiting weeks. And true to their word, uh, it was an exhaustive search. And thankfully, after that exhaustive search, I think speaking for all Charger fans, for, for both of us, for a lot of people, uh, they ended up with the the person we we had hoped they would end up with. You know, it takes two to dance, as we've said, but could not be more excited about being here right now talking to you about Jim Harbaugh being the next head coach of the Chargers and what it means for this team moving forward. It's an unbelievable day, and I, I just I'm trying to rack my brain, especially since 2017, since the team has moved up to Los Angeles. Like, is there another moment? especially in the off season that, that ranks uh, higher than this. I don't think so. I mean, you know, we, we talked about the search and you brought up a, an excellent point last week saying we can't think that this person's going to be a good head coach. We have to know. And uh, we know, we know yeah. that this guy just won a national championship. We know that this guy's been to a Super Bowl. We know that he's elevated every program he's ever been a part of. He's elevated the quarterback position and now he's going to be in Los Angeles for a long time. And, you know, it's been funny, like the last three weeks we've been talking about this coaching search and, you know, just the, the comments and, and hearing from Chargers fans, they didn't want to hear about anybody else. And I was almost a little nervous. I'm like, well, what happens if they don't get Harbaugh? Because he is option one, two, three, four, and five for every Chargers fan. So I, I'm glad that this is the end result. And, People watching and listening can take this however they want. I don't care. I've taken a ton of income in the last couple of days anyway. I don't want to hear it anymore. I do not want to hear it when it comes to the Spanos family anymore. That's it. It's over. And it should have been over for a while. But whatever the perceptions were of them and how they spend money and what was in the past is no longer – It's just, it's not a viable opinion anymore. I'm sorry. The, the, the family spent a billion dollars to move it out, to move to LA 600 million on the stadium, 400 million in three in relocation fee. They spent a quarter of a billion dollars on a facility that's going to open in June that I think probably went a long way into convincing Jim Harbaugh to come here. They made Joey Bosa, the highest paid edge, Derwin James, the highest paid safety, Justin Herbert, the highest paid player in the NFL when they signed extensions and then on top of that, they just had the highest paid defense in the NFL because Brandon Staley gave him a list of things that he needed and extensions he needed signed, players he needed to keep in order to get this thing right. And every step of the way, they have stepped up. And the narrative through this coaching search was they're not going to pay them. They are too cheap. They don't pay coaches. There's no chance they get Harbaugh. It's going to be another first-time guy. Enough. It's over. Like it, there is not, there are no more boxes to check for the Spanos family. They have proven every step of the way that they are spending, that they are putting capital into this franchise to try and deliver a Super Bowl to Chargers fans for the first time in the franchise's history. So, I don't mean to get on a soapbox and lecture, but I just I think back. There was a moment, and I, I don't even want to mention the person's name. He's such a dope. But I remember when Anthony Lynn still had a year left on his deal, and it was the blowout at the hands of the Patriots. And I, I remember seeing you know people send me things in, on the social media front. They sent me this video of this guy saying, I've known the Spanos family for 30 years. I've been doing this job in this, in this market for 30 years. No way they eat a year of his contract. Anthony Lynn will be back. He'll play out his contract because they don't play. They don't pay coaches, not the coach. And never heard him retract that statement. Never heard him. Didn't no. At least nobody sent me the apology of, oh, my mistake. They they did let him go a year early and they did pay him out. They're paying Brandon Staley for the final year of his contract. And they're probably going to make Jim Harbaugh one of the highest paid coaches in the NFL. And 
I don't mean to start it out with a lecture, but it's been so much of this through this process from the people that just take shots at this team and this franchise, and it doesn't hold. I'm sorry, it just does not hold. And this is the final nail in that coffin that you cannot say they don't spend money because this is it. That This was the last piece to that puzzle of what they will or will not you know, reportedly spend money on. And it doesn't just stop with Harbaugh. I mean, he has a staff that he wants to take care of. He wants to bring in best in class in everything, right? He's not going to do this halfway and he's not going to go to a place that's going to do it halfway. You don't leave the university of Michigan and become the highest paid coach in college football um, and, and leave that for an NFL job. That's just okay. Right. You know, the facility, um, obviously the money, but also putting together a first-class staff. I, I just want to read Dean Spanos and John Spanos' quotes um, in, the, in the press release real quick, just oh, for folks who Jim maybe Harbaugh's have not in there too. Those it. are fantastic. <laughs> the, the Jim Harbaugh one's just epic. Um, I can't wait. All right, so, so Dean goes, Jim Harbaugh is football personified, and I can think of no one better to lead the Chargers forward, the son of a coach, brother of a coach, and father of a coach who himself – was coached by the names of Schembechler and Ditka. For the past two decades, Jim has led hundreds of men to success everywhere he's been as their coach. And today, Jim Harbaugh returns to the Chargers, this time as our coach. Who has it better than us? And then John, you don't build a resume like Jim's by accident, and you don't do it by yourself. You need a team. And nobody has built a team more successfully and repeatedly in recent history than Jim Harbaugh. His former players swear by him and his opponents swear at him. Jim is uh, one of one, and we couldn't be more excited to have him back in the Chargers organization as our head coach. So I I think this just kind of plays to your point, Money, is this this ownership group, I I think really from 2017 on, like let's just not forget, when Anthony Lynn was hired in 2017, he had a really good rookie year. Started at 0-4 and ended strong. The following year with Phillip Rivers under center, 12-4, you win a playoff game, right? So – you know, I, I think Anthony Lynn earned that extra time with the Chargers. Sure. They went to get Brandon Staley because Brandon Staley was uh, in charge of the number one defense in the NFL. And guess what? Philly wanted Brandon Staley, and a lot of other teams wanted to talk to him too. So they were looking for that young and upcoming coach in the in the likes of a, of a Kyle Sean Shanahan McVay. or, and, or Sean yeah. McVay, right? Like th- that, they were looking for that, thinking that that could be the formula. And guess what? Everybody was on board. All right, so you can't tell me that not everybody was on board when Brandon Staley's press conference happened and and everybody was excited, and they started pretty well. They went a different route this way. Jim Harbaugh is is much different than all the guys before him. The the last three that we talked about, the first-time coordinators, uh, he's proven. And and I I think just pairing him with Justin Herbert, money, Justin Herbert's the biggest winner in all of this because Jim Harbaugh plays a style of football where it's not all on – the quarterback to win football games. And I feel like we have uh, seen Justin kind of try to put the team on his back. um, And sometimes it doesn't work out. And, and I don't think he's going to have to do that anymore. I think it's, I think his play is going to be elevated because of Jim Harbaugh. And I think that Jim Harbaugh, although it may take a year or two, right? There's a lot of salary cap and things that that need to be kind of decided here over the next couple of months, but, but the chargers are in really good hands, and I think uh, Justin Herbert, of anybody here, is probably the biggest winner. Certainly, and and you described it perfectly, which is we know the style of football Jim Harbaugh is going to play because he has played it everywhere he's coached, uh, whether that was San Diego, Stanford, San Francisco, or Michigan. It is all the same. It is physical. It is line play. It is a running game. It is a beat the snot out of you and finish you off in the fourth quarter. And for those that think, well, wait a minute, you got this Ferrari and Justin Herbert and you're not going to take it out of second gear. No, that's that's not what it is. What it is is, oh, we're setting you up for the knockout. We're, we're setting you up for the knockout because we've got the heavyweight champ and he's just going to jab and jab and jab because our line's going to beat you up, the running game's going to beat you up, and when you're not looking, here comes play action, downfield, home run, because the Chargers have a guy that can do that. 
And there's no better way to make Justin Herbert more effective and to make use with a vertical passing game and a downfield passing game than by having defenses on their heels. How many times during the season did we talk about the Chargers failing to dictate terms? That it had been long been a, I felt like almost a mantra of mine that we would discuss this, Chris, that why is it that every game they go into, they allow the opponent to dictate the style of play? Oh, we're going to let Tennessee drag us into the deep end. We're going to play in a shootout with the, with the Miami Dolphins. No more. From now on, Jim Harbaugh dictates terms. You are going to play a physical, slobber knocker style of football. And I can tell you right now, there are three people in particular that were not happy with the news today. And they are Andy Reid, Antonio Pierce, and Sean Payton. Because they know what this means. They know what it means and what it feels like to come out of a game that this guy coaches and how his teams play and how his brother's teams play. Because look, they're all Harbaugh's. John and Jim are a product of Jack and they all believe, and they're a product of Bo Schembechler and they, and they are all a product of the same football philosophy. And that is bust your ass in practice, play physically and outlast. And we've talked about it in the past. Tight end with his hand in the ground, fullback, running God's play, power. And you you beat the opponent into, uh, you beat him into submission. And that's how you win football. And again, for people that don't think that necessarily is in step with Justin Herbert, it is exactly in step. Because now you have an opportunity to, protect, pre, to present to him a counterpunch. Doesn't have to do everything. There's going to be a big old back behind him. I can promise you that. I don't know what his name is yet, but it's going to be 215 pounds plus, and it's going to be a hammer. Yeah, maybe it's Corum. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Could be. You know, Could we be. saw we saw Pete Carroll do that a little bit. You know, and that's that's the other thing that that to, to keep in mind. This is someone who just coached 13 games of college football against some really really good players. And he perhaps has a better idea of those intangibles, the things that aren't on a stat sheet or aren't a measurable that shows up at the combine. But I remember in this game, in this moment, this is a guy who stepped up and met the moment. And I, those are things that carry over. So you have this incredible advantage going into the draft and going into undrafted college free football, uh, college free agents of that, that frame of knowledge and that base that he has, and likely a number of his staff that are going to be coming here with him that are going to be able to share that with the new general manager as well. All right, guys, a big thank you to our partner, Microsoft Surface, the official sideline technology provider and laptop of the NFL and the Los Angeles Chargers that provides players and coaches with the tools to succeed both on and off the field. Check out the powerful Surface Pro 9, combining the power of a laptop with the flexibility of a tablet at surface.com. Speaking of new general manager and, you know, coaching staff, that, that's a big thing at, at this point. We'd just be speculating as to who's going to be on the staff. You know, you hear the name Jesse Minter from Michigan and that, that style of defense that has been really got to come, of, Chris, that has to come. I mean, if it comes, he's so I mean, good. You, and you look, you look at what Mike McDonald's doing in Baltimore and just how he is, shut down the likes of Ben Johnson and the Detroit Lions offense and Kyle Shanahan's offense and really just just making it miserable for offenses all yes. year long. That style of play, I, I think you can expect with the Chargers, and obviously we will know much more about who's going to be on the staff here in the days and in, in, in weeks to come. But, you know, from a general manager perspective, I, I think I just saw Rap Sheet tweet that uh, Hortiz from Baltimore is going to be flying in for a second interview. Obviously ties to John. Uh, I think you cannot go wrong with anybody in the Baltimore Ravens front office. Um, it's just a, it's just a proven track record of success from Newsom to, to Costa to all, all the guys that have been there for a long time as well. So uh, pairing Jim with somebody that he's comfortable with, um, you know, you, you read the tea leaves, and that that could be a potential option here as he flies in, um, I guess, tomorrow. 
Yeah, it looks like it's down to two. That's what it feels like, right? Brandon Brown's in town today for his second interview. And, yep. and Joe, as we do this podcast, he's probably having dinner with the, the Spanoses right now. Or, or maybe that was something this afternoon. And tomorrow it'll be Joe Ortiz. So if I'm reading the tea leaves, those are your two finalists. And it comes down to them presenting their vision. Now, I would imagine, you know, Brandon Brown presented it to Jim Harbaugh and the Spanoses today. And tomorrow... It'll be Joe Ortiz that presents his vision to Jim Harbaugh and the Spanoses as well. And and it's that partnership that we talked about. And I think for everybody that thought Jim was going to want to rest too much control, I think what we're seeing here is probably some pushback on that as well. That, no, I just want to find the right person. Let, let, let me, you know, let's make sure that you're not going to hire a GM that's a bigger personality than Jim Harbaugh. So you're going to have to find someone that's a good partner with him. He's just done it for too long. He's been too successful. He's too good at what he does. He builds a team a particular way and plays football a particular way. So you're going to have to find that partnership. So I think this is the smart way to do it. Once Harbaugh agrees to the deal, let's highlight a couple that, you know, a couple of the interviews that we really like that we believe resonated with us and let's present those to coach and make sure everybody's got this partnership. I would be, I don't know if there is one, but I'd be very surprised if we didn't discover that there was some sort of connection with Coach Harbaugh and Brandon Brown. I'm, I would imagine there's probably something there. I don't know what it is because yeah. it came from um, the Giants. And um, so I don't know. I, I think he was with the Eagles for a minute too. So not quite sure if there's a, a relationship there or how the two might know each other, but I would imagine there's there's got to be something, and that I think speaks to, hey, you guys, this is this is a lot of work. <laughs> you know, be, be, building a team is a lot of work, and it's not something that you can task a head coach with. It's just too hard to do. So you got to find that right partner, and that's what I would imagine they're they're getting into. But just going back to the first point you made before you mentioned Hort- uh, Joe Ortiz, is I please, I've got to believe that Jesse Minner is coming with them. I just, I have to believe be that huge that's get. part of it. Yeah, it, it would get. be, it'd be a huge get o- offensively. You know, you've heard different names from Greg Roman, Kellen Moore still in the building. Um, it would just be speculating at this point, but I, I think that we know the identity of what the offense is going to be. And it's just going to be an extension of what Jim Harbaugh has done at really every level that he's won at and having Justin Herbert as the centerpiece isn't a bad thing having Rashawn Slater, but looking at this roster money, man, there's going to be a lot of turnover. There's going to be a lot of turnover. There's going to be a lot of big decisions that need to be made. Um, Not everybody is going to be in that locker room in 2024. Um, Probably uh, a podcast for another day, but just knowing that you have the head coach in tow, um, you know, I, I think it puts a lot of players on notice too. Like, hey, this is the new sheriff in town. It's going to be a lot different than it's been in the past. And, you know, it's all laid out there now. You know, there's going to be free agency for yeah. a lot of guys. I, I think, you know, I'm sure Jim has kept his eyes on the league and, and has kind of skinned this roster, skimmed this roster and seen the guys that he thinks he can win with and, and guys that uh, he thinks probably should go elsewhere. And it's just going to look drastically different. I don't think in a bad way. Like, I I, I know it's going to take some time. I, I don't want to say that, hey, overnight, Jim Harbaugh is going to be hoisting a Lombardi. You never know. But right. there's a lot of work to be hey, done he went here from, for the next couple of years. You know, he went from 6-10 and 10 to 13-3 uh, and three in the NFC Championship game in his first year. You know, took a team that was 6-10, and 10, his first year coach of the 49ers, 13-3. and three. Same players. Now, they were really good players. But you saw, you saw the leap from yeah. Navarro Bowman, the leap. You saw um, Mod Brooks, the leap. Alden Smith, the leap, you know, to all pro level players on the defensive side of the ball. And then Alex Smith, who had almost been written off to some degree, now guides a team yeah. into the NFC Championship game. Frank Gore who had always been a very steady player now becomes a pro bowl and all pro level player under Jim Harbaugh. They built that offensive line anchored by Joe Staley. And you just think about what that old line looked like under, under Harbaugh. So uh, I'll give it to you. I I don't want to put you on the spot, Chris, but earlier today, DJ came on with Petros and me and he said, and I said, what do you, what do you make of the roster? How much 
do you think it's going to change? And he said, I'll, he goes, well, he goes, I was thinking about this and I'll, I'll put it to you and let's see if we come up with the same names. Okay. Just give me some names of Harbaugh players that are already on the roster. And <laughs> the exact same three. <laughs> we, we, cause you know, it's not like I'm going to go through 20 players, but the first uh, three, he's like, there it is. Herbert, Rashawn, and Derwin. So we did Herbert. We just took off the tape. Oh, okay. Herbert, like, Herbert out of it. Yeah, obviously. Okay. So, so Herbert uh, out of uh, it. Okay. Uh, Rashawn, Derwin, and Thule. There it is. Bing, bang, boom. Is that, is that Three it? Three players. <laughs> and what do you got? You got a defensive playmaker and a captain of the defense. You got an edge rusher and you got a left tackle. It's a pretty good yeah. place to start. Yeah. Those three an, guys. An edge rusher who has who has the effort level of like a Max yes. Crosby, who just is always exactly. going. You know, like like Rashawn, a Big Ten guy, so so Harbaugh coached against him. Thule, I think he's going to be a stud. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, Derwin, we know what Derwin has done in the past, and he had a tough year last year, but I, I could see – He might be the only guy like – Go ahead. He might be the only guy in the building that's more competitive than Jim. Like that's yeah. that that to me is that that's to to be able to have those three things is it, and obviously the quarterback. You you have anchors, defensive you know pass rusher, left tackle, captain of the defense, captain of the offense. You've so you've got these foundational blocks that you can now build around. I, you know, in terms of, and then, like you said, we can get into it down the road a little bit, but I do think it, it bears mentioning you're probably, you're going to need to remake. I, I think the tight end room and the running back room to fit yeah. the style of play that Jim Harbaugh requires. You are going to need tight ends to play with their hand in the ground and knock the snot out of you. You're going to need a big back that is going to be a, a hammer at the end of games and able to change the, you know, to, to change the calculus of a defense as they're trying to get the ball back. And you've got this massive offensive line with tight ends, fullbacks, running backs that are coming at you. So those, those are things which, you know, we can get into the number five overall pick and, and what that means you know, for, does that mean it now becomes a tackle instead of a wide receiver? Yeah. It, does it bring Brock Bowers into play now as a full service tight end? Or does it still mean, you know, I need football. I need, I need incredible football players. And that's where the, and when you think about the receivers in this draft, you've got the Ferrari and Malik neighbors and, and to me and, and both Adunze and, and Harrison Jr., you've got big, gnarly, punch you in the face wide receivers that are physical, that are explosive, that are true difference makers. And so it'll be interesting to see what direction he wants to go there. Or if you just want to trade out because you know you need to really rebuild this thing and to restock it and to, to get a lot more bodies that fit sort of this new style of play that they're going to be getting after. Yeah, no question. You know, I I think I'd put Henley as like the fourth. Like I, I mentioned I, him too, and DJ was like, "Yeah," he goes, "Definitely." That's funny. So he he was the other one that I mentioned that the DJ's like, "Yeah, I didn't think about the rookie Henley, but cert just because we haven't seen him play a lot, but yes, yeah. certainly." I feel that's, like he's got that's those, someone. Yeah, I feel like he, I feel like, but based on the way he played in college, no doubt it's he he looks like someone that he can really, especially look at those linebackers in Baltimore. Just so think about this. Mike McDonald, Jesse Minner, these are guys that work together. So Charger fans, do yourself a favor and pay very close attention to that Baltimore defense. That's what we're talking about with Jesse Minner. That's what we're talking about he did at Michigan. And particularly when it comes to Henley and Derwin, I want you to get a look at Patrick Queen and at Roquan Smith and at Kyle Hamilton and how those guys are playing. And that's kind of what we're getting at with Henley and with Derwin and what we're going to be looking for money, money, uh, that the Sunday night game, I think we talked about it afterwards, but I have never seen a more violent defense than the Baltimore defense. Just like the way that yeah. they were, they were hitting that night. Um, and I know the Chargers kept it close, but it, it's a violent defense. And 
you know, from Patrick Queen to Roquan Smith, like Roquan Smith, uh, I think he was mic'd up last week against Houston. Oh, it was great. Just, oh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Ortiz is the one who had really good notes on um, on Roquan right. and, and and brought uh, him Bridge, over. Bridge. If I, I think. How, I wait a minute. Right. How, how do you how do you know that, Chris? How do you know that about Ortiz? On, how do you know that about Ortiz and, and Roquan? Was it on X? No. Nope. Did you say that? Because John Harbaugh mentioned it in his presser. And if and if and if you don't think there it is. <laughs> that, that John's trying to give his guy a little nudge here, knowing that he was having that dinner tomorrow or having that interview tomorrow, if you don't think he wasn't trying to, hey, little nugget. Joe Ortiz is is the guy that that was doing all the work on Roquan and convinced us to make this trade. And now you see the benefits. Now you better believe. <laughs> that's brother sending a signal to brother like hey i got your guy okay he's right here yeah this is gonna be your guy you i know, love which I is love funny when, i love when the guys do that though money like i like les sneed did he spent his first three minutes of his uh yeah, his exit talking about raheem and it's just you know you want to brag on your guys but i mean yeah how about that little nugget yeah, I, I, when I heard, I was watching the presser today, I started cracking up. I was like, oh, this is too good. John trying to send a signal to the Chargers and to his brother. Hey, this guy's been doing it here for 25 years. He deserves a shot. He's really yeah. good, which is interesting because, you know, we play the, the, the Chargers play the AFC North next year. So we're going to be at Baltimore. We got a Harbaugh Bowl. You don't think? No, it's in, it's in, it's in LA. Oh, it's in LA. I think it's in LA. Let me just. Oh, I thought we were there. Check that as we, you know, this is a. Or are we in Pittsburgh and Cleveland? You're right. I think we're, I think, we're in Pittsburgh and we're in Cleveland, and we have Baltimore here. Yep, yeah, Baltimore. I think you're absolutely here right. Because uh, fans were saying like, "Oh, that should be the kickoff game if the Ravens win the Super Bowl." It won't be because the Ravens are going to get a home road game road. on the opener. Yeah, the road. But you know what? It, somebody mentioned Thanksgiving, and I feel like that's the perfect prime time Thanksgiving game. Is is the brothers' right. family coming together? In Los Angeles, no doubt. I, I have to believe it's going to be a primetime game, and I think that that may be the best plate for it. So, you know, once the schedule comes out, we can we can dish on that. But sure. um, I, I don't I don't know what else you want to talk about right now because there, there's so much that's going to come out uh, as we tape this on a Wednesday night. Tomorrow we're probably going to get a little bit more intel as to who some of the coordinators he's eyeing, the general manager is going to come out. Um, I just – I'm I'm happy for Chargers fans because you and I see all the same comments and just the, the way that this has kind of dragged out since that 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 game in Las Vegas. Um, we've kind of hit different stages of I can't believe this is happening to all right let's let's finish the season to all right we're going to interview cast a wide net. The wide net was casted. I mean, I give the Spanish yeah. family a lot of credit for casting this wide net and, and interviewing the likes of of Mike Vrabel and Ben Johnson and all these up and comers too, leaving leaving no stone unturned. Because obviously, you know, Jim Harbaugh, you don't know what he's going to do. You don't know what he ultimately wanted to do. But uh, we found out today, and and I, I give the the Spanish family a ton of credit for for making sure that. Uh, they get this thing right and they close the deal and they certainly did it. Yeah. You better f coming off a of five and 12 season and, and having six primetime games that probably uh, did not excite the networks too much toward the end of the season. there. thinking eh, I'll probably dial this back now down yeah. to like maybe three. No, when Jim Harbaugh and Justin Herbert, you better believe there's going to be a lot of primetime time. There's going to probably be a, a holiday game in there. There may be a flight to Germany to play the Panthers or a flight to Brazil to play somebody else. I mean, this is, this is a, this a big day. It's a big day and a huge congratulations to, to John and Dean Spanos and to everybody else in the front office that was part of this, you know, Ed and Jeannie and just everybody that's, that works up there. That's, that's all part of the decision-making process because Look, they, they hired a superstar, and you need it in this market. And beyond that, so much more important than that, they hired the guy that everybody thinks is going to bring a Super Bowl, that's going to maximize the talents of Justin Herbert in ages 26 through 31 at least, and I hope 26 through 36 and, and 40 or whatever, that, that the two of them are going to be locked 
like Belichick and Brady, Harbaugh and Herbert. It works, as we said, you know, with alliteration, and it's exactly what this franchise needed. You can't not take advantage of the talent you have at quarterback when it's a quarterback league. You needed someone that was a winner more than anything. We discussed that ad nauseum, that you needed someone to walk through those doors at that new facility in June that players look at and go, this guy knows how to win. He's going to he's gonna kick my ass, you know, in camp and in practice. And that cakewalk is over. And it's going to be physical. And it's not going to be fun. He's going to air you out. He's going to run hot. And he's going to hold you accountable. And things are going to be a little uncomfortable. But he's going to win. Because that's all he's done his whole life. And they're, they're, it just it made too much sense. It made way too much sense for these two parties to get together and do this. Someone as competitive as he is, with the advantage you have with the quarterback, with the situation where you've got both jobs open to pair it up with a general manager, you've got a top five pick, and you still have anchors, young anchors on your team to build around in Slater, Thule, Derwin, and, and Justin. And it just... I can't wait to see what it looks like. Like you said, there's still, because we're doing this right after the announcement, still a lot to be sorted out. Once the staff gets put together and and the general manager is announced, we'll come back, do another one, and and start to break down how this thing might shake out. But for now, you got to play Andy Reid, Sean Payton twice a year. Antonio Pierce knocked the, the Chargers around for 63. Our old friend Tom Telesco's over there. You know, we know what he does with his first round picks. They got the 13th pick now. You got to find a quarterback. Be interesting to see where they go with that. But, you know, and that's just the division. Chris, yeah. Jim Harbaugh's got to go up against John Harbaugh. He's got to go up against Mike Tomlin. You know, he's got to go up against, you know, Josh Allen and Joe Burrow. This is a gnarly division. And now knowing that the Chargers not only have the quarterback, they have the head coach that you believe can go in with a game plan and win any of these games uh, because he's proven he's done it in the past all the way to the Super Bowl. You, it's just a completely, completely different feeling around this team moving forward. They got an alpha now. I mean, they got yeah. a guy who, you know, money, like you said, there's not many, not many coaches that could come into the AFC West and still be an alpha, right? There's maybe Belichick and Harbaugh. I, I don't think there's another coach. Yeah. Maybe Vrabel to a, a smaller degree. Uh, but y you have Harbaugh. And I, I just I was thinking about this because you've been the voice of the Chargers since they moved up to Los Angeles in 2017. And there's always been kind of stages here, right? You know, it's very hard to move a team. Um, they were yeah. at the StubHub Center in Dignity Health Sports Park for a few years. Um, the the big shiny SoFi Stadium. Um, was kind of, you know, it was a little bit sobering when COVID happened and you couldn't have fans yeah. in the stands. And then, you know, the second year fans come into SoFi, um, they have a brand new facility now that they're opening later this year. That's about 10 minutes from SoFi Stadium, right next to LAX and El Segundo, right next to the Lakers and the Kings. And now they have a Hall of Fame type head coach, someone who's been to a Super Bowl and just won a national championship. I think that this is finally the year that we can say the Chargers are here, right? They have planted roots in Los Angeles. They have their own brand new facility, and they got a pretty good head coach to boot with a franchise quarterback. So today feels different, right? It, it, it just <laughs> sure does. From everything that's happened over the last several years and um, staying the course and, and trying to find the right formula – Seems like today they found it. No doubt. And just look at the final four. And you tip your cap to, to Dan Campbell for getting the, the Lions there. But I think in the case of the Lions, you had top 10 picks for the last half decade. It's about time yeah. you cashed those things in, you know. And But Kyle Shanahan, been to a Super Bowl. Andy Reid has won multiple Super Bowls. John Harbaugh has won a Super Bowl. Like, Here's what matters in this league, coaching and quarterbacking, coaching and quarterbacking. And maybe you have one that, that, that surpasses the other considerably, and that's why you get here. And, or maybe you have both, 
or maybe the the quarterback is just so good it overcomes everything. That's what I'm talking about. And, and look for Dan Campbell for all the incoming he took at that presser, you know, with the bite in the kneecap on the way down and bite your kneecap on the way back yeah. up, and oh, it's just some meathead. They took on his personality. They took yeah, they on n- that team plays the way that guy talks, and it's a, it, there's not a lot of physical teams like that. Baltimore Ravens are a physical team. We know the San Francisco defense is a physical team. We see the, the Chiefs have the greatest quarterback of his generation right now, of his era right now, and perhaps could go down as perhaps of all time. I mean, six consecutive AFC championship games, my God. So, and and you have a Lions team, physical team. <laughs> what, what do they do? Lions run the ball, run the hell out of the ball. That's why they drafted Jameer Gibbs number 12 overall, and nobody's making fun of that pick now. And what no. that guy can do, you know, they drafted O-lineman, Taylor Decker, first rounder, Panay Sewell, first rounder. Look at the 49ers, traded multiple picks to get Christian McCaffrey, a former first rounder here. That's what they wanted their identity to be. Traded a first rounder to get Trent Williams, paid him a bunch of money. What do the Ravens do? O-line and run the ball with, you know, like it works. It yeah. works. And now the, now the Chargers have it. They got it with a quarterback and they got it with a head coach. And man, I would, it's early. They got to prove it. I'd put that pair up against anybody. You tell me you can take any head coach and quarterback pairing in the league. And I know it'll start with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes because of what they've been able to do, to do together. But man, this is, this might be right behind it. You know, John Harbaugh, Lamar Jackson, who's going to win his second MVP this year. This is right there. I believe that to be the case. Yeah, and you can retool uh, and reload pretty quickly in the NFL. And again, yeah. we, there's a, there's a lot of household names uh, that frankly can't be here next year because of the cap numbers. So we're, we're going to find out who those names are going to be very shortly. But you know, you mentioned the Lions, and uh, you know they really they hit on that that golf and Stafford trade. But but I just I, I look at the contributions that they've gotten. You mentioned Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta. Yeah. I mean, um, Campbell, their 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 linebacker. I mean, Jack Campbell. You, you, have, you have guys that are contributing immediately. And in again, if you bring in a, a smart personnel mind and pair him with Harbaugh, Harbaugh knows his type. He knows what he needs to be successful, whether that's in free agency or the draft. So if you hit on some draft picks, retool this roster, and maybe get more out of some of the guys who are currently on the roster. Lenny, I don't know who it's going to be. But I venture to say uh, there's some guys that are currently on this roster that maybe didn't perform or you didn't see their potential this year. You'll see it this year, right? It, Jim Harbaugh is going to identify some guys that he said, you know what? I think that this guy can be better. I think he can fit in my system, but we got to get more out of him. What does he do better? And I don't know who those guys are, like I said, but I, I have a feeling that there's some some players on this roster that maybe didn't make the impact in 2023 that they're going to make in 2024. Yeah, I'll say, you know, one that's a a free agent that we didn't mention, and I think is fair, and because he doesn't necessarily fit the profile of of a Jim Harbaugh type, but, man, you'd be hard-pressed to tell me that Gerald Everett wasn't one of the hardest workers and, and one of the biggest effort givers from this past season. When it, it did not matter what the score was, well, I'll never forget him for that that Raider game when they were down and he's out there cracking helmets and fighting for extra yards and and still yapping at guys and trying to get something going with this team. And I think we've seen that from him. You put someone one on one with Gerald Everett, he's going to break the tackle. You're not getting him down. And so I think there, you know, that that's just to your point that there may be players you don't think of on this roster that that end up. Isaiah Spiller's a big back. He's a big dude, you know? Right. So, you, you know, think about he's he's a bigger guy. He's a lot bigger than Austin and and Joshua. So I think it's, you know, that's that's another one that comes to mind is here's a legitimate 215, 220-pound back, you know, that clocks in at six feet. And that's sort of more in the style. Um, so, Yeah. Look, like you're like gonna Zion, you're gonna carry like over a lot of these Sawyer. players. There's gonna be a lot of the yeah. I was gonna say money like Sawyer or Zion. Like those are the kind of guys I'm thinking about. Like they have an extra gear they got to get to right. And, and right. I think that Jim could probably get that. No, 
that's the hope. Line play, you know, O line, the and that'll be the interesting, you know, that'll be the interesting debate. You know, you're I don't think you're gonna get rid of all four of those guys, all four of those contracts. Maybe you do, but you you can keep one, you can restructure, you can figure it out. You know, it certainly seems I think about Justin Smith, and then I look at Joey Bosa and I'm like, eh, I see that. I can see it. Hmm. And also, let's not forget, I've uh, you know, I feel bad doing it, but I've told the story before. I remember standing on the sideline at training camp when joint practices, Joey Bosa's, I can't remember who he was running with. Maybe it was Kamara or so. Who did they, who did they have joint practices with this year? Was it? Um, uh, this year it was, uh, was it? Was it New Orleans? It was New Orleans. It was New Orleans. Yeah, it was New Orleans. Yeah, it was New Orleans. No, or no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't New Orleans. Yeah, it was. Yes, it because, was because Derek Carr because was. Because I was, I wanted you to sit with down with Derek Carr. Right, and I remember <laughs> Joey ended up. I remember Joey ended up, or it may have been two years ago when he ended up covering Kittle, or maybe it was this year. No, it was this year. He was covering Camara, and he he just looks up and he's like, "What am I effing doing? Like, what am I even effing?" And like, I think we've heard that he was never quite comfortable with what was asked of him. Yeah. And so there's I think that's something to keep in mind with with Joey and and moving forward and all those names I rattled off, you know, Mod Brooks, Alden Smith, Justin Smith, and those dudes that performed and just think about the guys up at Michigan and and how those guys have all those Aiden Hutchinson, Joey Bosa, like come on. I mean, we're we're shopping in the same aisle on that exactly. one. So that's something I think to to keep an eye on. I if Joey Bosa stays healthy, it's not even in the conversation. It's what's his cap number 32. All right, we'll figure out how to work around that. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll figure out how to work around that. Let's let's uh let's sort that out cuz that guy ain't going anywhere. I know the injuries are a concern, but that's a Jim Harbaugh player. If, you know, just going back to what he had in in San Francisco and and what he's had in Michigan, there's always been a pass rusher in the first round or second round from Michigan in the draft. And man, like I, I, I think Khalil Mack's a hardball player too. It's just that does the, does the money work, right? A, a guy who is a veteran who can play on the other side of Thule, let's say. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with Joey or Khalil. Heck, it, it'd be great right. to have them both, but just the, the cap is is telling us something yeah. else right I now. I think the cap I, would I, suggest otherwise that it's yeah. going to be hard to keep both of them. You're probably going to have to pick. Would be my guess. Yeah, yeah, and that's again, and that's that could what, mean what can you fetch in a trade? Exactly. Can you get anything for Khalil in a trade? Maybe. Can you get anything for Joey Bosa in a trade? Yes. Yeah. Even with the injuries, absolutely. I can promise you people are going to be lined up to trade for that guy. So that's where I guess a little bit of the conversation could come in because you get to get rid of more of the dead money if you end up with a trade as opposed to just straight out moving on. I, I, I wanted to ask you how weird it was for you to watch Tom Telesco do the Raiders press conference today. <laughs> funny. <laughs> it was really funny to see the, yeah. uh, the water that said, just win baby on it. It was hilarious. It was. But I'm happy for Tom. He's a great guy. Too. He's a great friend, great friend of the show that we do. Watched it all the time. Would talk to us about what we've been talking about. Just a really good person that, you know, you can always, you can always, and I guess maybe we can help him out a little bit by crafting a narrative, but you can always tell the character of someone based on how they treat people that can't quite elevate them in their professional lives. And yeah. Tom, I think, is a testament to that and all the relationships that he had with people on the team. So happy for him, family, trust, respect, but still very <laughs> happy for him and, and happy, you know, he gets to stay close to home. His son can finish up his final year at, at CDM with, with him just being over in Vegas, a quick jump away. And yep. and that way they're, they're square there. So I'm happy for him, but yeah, sweep them and let them win we'll all their other games year now. and then meet them in the playoffs and win a third time. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Tom's all class. Uh, and it's just football, you know, it's just football. And that's the business people, people bounce around all the time. And I'm glad that, that he landed on his feet and it's going to just add more intrigue to the division, man. I mean, you have, you yeah. have Antonio Pierce, a young and upcoming coach who isn't in the same class as a, as a Peyton or a Harbaugh or a Reed, but 
you never know what he can become. And, yeah. you know, they're, they may be a quarterback away. Their defense played really well down the stretch. Um, we know that it Thomas is weird, though, ex- Chris, isn't it? it? It is weird that Raiders hung a 63 on the Chargers and they hired Tom and the Dolphins scored on every possession in the opening week against Brandon and had like 200 yards at the half for Tyreek Hill and, and they hire him as their DC. It's like, is, man, kind of weird. Are they going to hire him? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to hire so? him. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It is, it is funny. It is funny. It's just weird. It's, but hey, no, this, whatever. And this is, man, this is just January. It's going to get weirder. There's yeah. a lot more openings, free agency trades. Um, I mean, I can't wait for all of it. The combine, we're going to be cooking yeah, at the combine, man. We're going to be cooking at the combine. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be uh, fun. It's going to be a fun I, combine trip. We'll be doing it from there. I think that, uh, I think next week we're going to have a lot of, a lot of fun stuff in store for you guys. Once we kind of get the, uh, the press conference stuff all shaked out and, Hopefully talk to a lot of people next week uh, about uh, a new day in Los Angeles for the Chargers. Jim Harbaugh is the head coach, and uh, we're just getting started when it comes to content. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to do this, Money. If you're listening to this on Wednesday night, congratulations. You're one of the first few to do so because I think this thing is going up right away. Looking forward to it. All right, guys. For Money, I'm Chris. This has been Chargers Weekly. We'll see you next time.